I motioned for Sam to follow as we crept up to the large gate surrounding the allegedly abandoned mansion. Sam, who was visibly nervous about the situation, reluctantly joined me. There it is, Sam. The Thomas Mansion. I looked up in awe at the building. Being an adventurous teen, I always wanted to go ghost hunting. So, of course, when I heard about the murder of the Thomas family, I knew I had to check the place out. Sam fumbled with his camera, trying to ensure it was set up properly. I sighed in frustration. I thought I told you to be prepared. I'm sorry, Dan. I was tired. I noticed Sam's messy hair and half-open eyes. This guy was always trying to sleep. At least he remembered the camera. I began to focus on my mission and started to move. Sam followed, and after a few minutes of investigating, we found a window which had been previously shattered. I crawled through the window first, and then looked back. Sam was still peering through the window, his expression filled with worry. Sam, come on! Sam was visibly trembling. Do you... Do you really want to do this? Sam mumbled, his voice trembling along with his words. Yes, we're already here. Come on. Sam remained frozen in place. Irritation started to creep up within me. Just as I was about to scold Sam again, a loud crash echoed from the other side of the house causing both of us to jump. Sam, come on! Sam shook his head in refusal. I sighed and snatched the camera from his hands before venturing into the hallway, searching for the source of the sound. I guess you have to do things yourself if you want them to get done at all, I muttered. I walked through the hall until I came down a staircase where a dresser had apparently been thrown down. It had broken part of the railing and caused damage to the tile floor during its descent. It didn't take a high-level intuition to discern that this was the source of the loud crash. Taking a moment to compose myself, I began my trek up the stairway. I was unsure of what lay at the top for me, but something deep within me tempted me to go up. The voice of curiosity that had brought me here continued to lead me. Just as I reached the top of the stair, I was startled by a loud creaking sound. It sounded like the pressure of stepping on a creaky floorboard, but I was sure it wasn't from my own step. Then I heard the opening of a door down the hallway. I turned my head to see who or what was there, but the darkness of the hallway shrouded my visibility. I reached for the camera to turn on the flashlight I had attached to it and quickly pointed it in that direction. The light revealed nothing but an empty hallway. Gathering up my courage, I began to walk towards the door that had been opened. As I walked, I began to consider what hadn't crossed my mind until this very moment. What was I looking for? The Thomas family had been killed by some maniac named Jack Henderson, and the psychopath had already been arrested. Whatever clues were in here are likely long gone. That's when the more obvious question hit me. Who else is in this house? Maybe someone else had come to snoop around as I had, but I found that unlikely. This was an active case, and the murder had only occurred a week ago. 
when I came here, the last thing I expected to find was someone else rummaging around and tossing furniture down the stairs. I stopped at the foot of the door. It was creaked open slightly, and something deep within my soul told me that entering this room would be the worst kind of mistake. The curiosity within me was waging war with my common sense. I could leave now and no one would ever know. Or I could face the abyss within this room. I started to think about what the killer had said when questioned about the murders. Jack Henderson's only statement on the matter was, As will be done. There had to be more to this. I had to find out. I gently opened the door, the light of my camera illuminating what appeared to be a master bedroom, in which curtains and sheets were torn and strewn everywhere. Also notable was the stained blood of what I could only assume was the former Mr. and Mrs. Thomas. The feeling of dread had not entirely dissipated, but I tried to suppress it. My examination of the room found a lot of scattered, unimportant items. But then I noticed a piece of notebook paper on the nightstand. I reached out and grabbed the piece of paper, trying to discern the messy writing in this dark room. As my eyes adjusted, the message became clear. (laughs) How? How did it? Wait, no, of course. It It had to be a coincidence. That's my name. I never knew the Thomases, and I certainly had never been here before. The the note must have been for someone else. I pocketed it just in case and looked up towards the window. Who, Who was that tall man watching from the wood line? My question would not be answered as someone grabbed me from behind and I immediately kicked and cried out in fear. It was the police. Of course, you don't go screwing around in a crime scene, start causing a ruckus, and not get caught. I really was a stupid kid. Of course, they questioned me for a while and eventually realized I was just an idiot with a camera. A camera which was taken as evidence, of course. I was relieved. It seemed like everything turned out all right. The next day, Sam's mother reported that her son had been missing since the night before. Samuel Ward was never found. <laughs>